Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Marizio Marti, uh, Italy Victor 3 X-ray Alpha Zulu from Italy. Uh, and uh, he says he's been an ARRL member for many years. And he has built his own Magloop antennas. Now, in the U.S., most people buy their Magloop antennas. It is possible to make them, uh, and some people do, and it can be a rather complex process to get the capacitor involved because to support the high voltage that the capacitor faces, it's a big, big capacitor. Now, this is a little different in Europe. In Europe, the so-called mag loop, which is technically a small HF loop, um, and but it does excite the magnetic field a little bit more than the larger full-length loop. The mag loop antenna is popular in Europe, and making them from scratch is also popular. People take great delight in cutting those plates for the capacitors and putting the whole thing together and making it work. I've even seen one where the uh, capacitor stator was a bolt about this long, quarter inch bolt, and it had the big plates cut out. And you'd put a, a nut down here, put a plate, put another nut next to it, tighten it up, put another plate, another nut, and so on and make these things all work. And they design them with stepper motors and so on. Really some very, very incredibly interesting things coming out of it. Now he asked me a question about all the different parameters that he's calculated for his loops. And I'm very sad to say that I had no clue about all of these, but I will show a picture of uh, what if I get it right, Maurizio uh, is working on and uh, what he's done with it. He's talked all over Europe, even over to South America and many USA hams on this particular magnetic loop antenna. Why are the mag loop antennas so popular? Well, in Europe, a lot of the houses butt up right next to each other, sort of like row houses, except each one is different. Uh, based on what the builder had. They go right up next to each other. So they've got a bit of a back garden, not much, maybe 20 feet, something like that, maybe only 10 feet deep. And so they use these mag loop antennas because they're low profile. You can put it up on the roof in the back and it doesn't show from the street. And people over in Europe are even far more sight conscious than they are uh, in the United States. I remember when I was in Switzerland, I saw that uh, there was a house that was just made of bamboo poles on each corner. They put bamboo poles and bamboo poles along the roof line and so on. And they had to leave it there for 30 days like that so that neighbors could ascertain if they wanted to allow that house or not. And it was something they went to. In, in Europe, this idea that you and your neighbors kind of form a oneness is much more a part of life there than it is here in the U.S. where we are all incredibly rugged individuals. So I want to show you what this guy's done. It's amazing. Take a look at this. Look at this antenna. This is for 80 meters. One, two, three loops, okay? Three loops. And then here's the driver loop, which is a full meter in diameter. So that makes this about, oh, five feet tall, something like that, okay? And uh, this could go up outside. It's right now set up to operate inside. That's an 80 meter magnetic loop. And look at the size of the thing. Now, one thing he did ask me is if there is a book uh, that he could use. Here's the book. This was sold by the League for a while. It's called Magnetic Loop Antennas, 
uh, slightly different each time. And it shows a picture of a four winding loop with uh, a box down here for the capacitor. It doesn't show the feed loop uh, on there. And it's got even radiation patterns and so on inside. This book is by Oldrich Berger and Ing Marek Dvorsky, uh, both in the Czech Republic. And let me read this because it's really hard to read. Okay, the ISBN is uh, 978-80-260-8259-0. Okay, uh, this book is actually printed by a, a Magloop manufacturer who has a bunch of loops in here. See, with the multiple turns, it's very common for these loops, okay? And uh, showing how to handle all the different parts of the loop. Now, these are products that they have, but they give lots of the design equations and everything like that, okay? And um, in the front of the book are the design equations. Let me find that section here. There's just all kinds of stuff in here on mag loops. And so you see the design equations are given for these things. And you can use these design equations to come up with the right thing uh, for an antenna. This is, um, let's see, just at the square root level, I don't see any calculus uh, in here. Logs, natural logs, um, as opposed to log 10, uh, but no integrals or differential equations or anything like that. So this is all something you can do on a calculator. Okay, so here is the book, the only book I know uh, that, sp that talks about magnetic loop antennas, because um, Americans don't tend to build these themselves. Some have, uh, and I tested one, uh, as a matter of fact. So there you go. There's your book. So um, Maurizio, I would say that's about what I can offer for you, is that um, that book has a lot of equations in it that will help you as you design your mag loop antennas. Now, on behalf of Zach Lau at the ARRL headquarters, who's a technical editor there, he insists that these antennas are, in fact, small HF loops rather than mag loops. The term mag loop has become extremely common. And I think um, it's to the point where trying to push against the tide is impossible. So I'll go ahead and call them mag loops too. I have um, a magnetic loop for transmitting uh, that's built by uh, MFJ. I've got another one from another private company, and there are a bunch, a bunch out there. If you pick up QST, and here I am picking up QST, and you look in the front, and let's see if this has it, or my memory is correct or not. You do, you are a member of the league, right? It's 50 bucks, which is the price of dinner out with your wife these days. Um, see, the new QROA, okay, um, raises the bar again for magnetic loop antennas. See, this is a small HF loop. Here's the capacitor in here. Here's the driving element right here. Note how small this is compared to the driving element he has for this thing right here. These are all variables you can play with. This uses a vacuum-based capacitor, which will uh, go for higher voltages. Note this one has a real nice little automatic tuner down there for it. And there are other options for mag loops in here. So, do mag loops work? Yes. My experiments with the MFJ mag loop uh, they actually have several. My experiments with that mag loop show that it works about as well as a dipole. As well as a dipole. So even though you may not have a lot of space, you can put up the mag loop. I um, 
know somebody. In fact, I got a picture of it of somebody who put up a, an MFJ mag loop in his backyard. Uh, they're about this big, about a meter in diameter, and he put it up on a pole and hung a birdhouse from it and stabilized it with threads on the bottom and curled fake ivy around the thing uh, to make it look like it's a yard art uh, kind of thing in a birdhouse. And that's how he did all of his uh, operating and it works very well for him. Mag loops do work. They tend to be pricey. Can you build one yourself? Yes. Is it easy? No. Can you persevere through it? Yes, but get guidance because um, if you want, buy this book. Uh, it was for sale by the League, but it, I gave you the um, ISBN for it. You can still find it maybe on Amazon. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you can go to decastlercom slash support and look for several different ways, including Patreon, also a tip jar, and uh, another method. So check it out. And until we next meet, 73.